We're talking cuppings of floors. Yeah. Cupping of the floors. I know what cupping is because you and I have been on this radio show together for a very long time. I've learned yeah. a ton about flooring and other issues that have to do with uh, bamboo and different types of wood and fake wood and real wood and vinyl and all that. What is cupping for our newer listeners? And is that normal? And is it an easy thing to remedy? So, you know, this question of cupping and bowing and, and buckling, David, comes up literally every single day in the summer. Okay, so our phone starts ringing probably, I would say, May and goes all the way through virtually uh, into mid-October. And the very first call that comes in is there's something wrong with the floor. Okay, and, and so obviously, we, you know, we would ask, well, what's wrong with the floor? And then, or, 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 or that floor you put down is crap. Those are the best. <laughs> those are the best. You know, what's wrong with your floor that you just installed? Well, really what, what's wrong is the environment in which the floor lives is not uh, conducive or is not allowing the floor to really function properly. So what, what generally happens in the, in, the, in the summer is that if you do not condition your, your home properly, and this, you know, Rich talks about this all the time, um, and Amy asked a very good question off here, you know, is there a, a, you know, a way to sort of de, uh, you know, dehumidify the, the, the home? And, and the way you do that is you run your air conditioner at a certain temperature, and that actually pulls a lot of moisture out of the air. Well, why is that important to a wood floor? Because, not to get into the weeds, David, but uh, wood floors are hygroscopic. And what that means is they will both absorb and release moisture in the presence of relative humidity. So, for example, if you take a piece of wood and you stick it in a bucket of water, what's it going to do? Expand. It's going to expand and it's going to really expand, right? So, when our floors are milled and our floors are kiln dried and we receive them from, from the manufacturer, we actually keep them in our uh, facility to acclimate. Well, what is acclimation? Acclimation puts the floor in a very specific range of temperature and humidity. Before we install your wood floor, David, our production staff comes out to your home. We'll take a moisture reading of the plywood. We'll take a, our thermohygrometer, which is an instrument that's used to read temperature and humidity in the air, and make sure that all of those conditions are correct before we deliver our floor. And when we install the floor, it will function properly, unless after we've finished the work for you, and it's you know mid-August and it's 90% relative humidity outside and you decide that you like it 85 degrees in your home and there's 70% relative humidity sure. inside your home, that floor is going to basically absorb all that excess moisture. It's going to swell and it's going to cup. So cupping looks like a washboard. So when you look at a wood floor and you mm -hmm. see that washboard look, it almost looks like like it's water damaged. Well, the center dips down. And, the center and the dips down rise and the edges rise up because there's an imbalance. So what's happening is the, the, the wood floor is absorbing the excess relative humidity from the air and it's drier underneath and it actually distorts the wood. And in some cases permanently, in some cases not. So what we always do is we always educate our clients as to you know properly how to properly maintain their home year round. How long, because before I knew you, this is 25, 30 years ago, 2800 Lakeshore Drive, Unit 19. Yeah, yeah you talked about it before, right. sure. So when I was there, I had a flood, and then I had to pull out the old floor, put in the new floor. Yep. And at that time, the flooring company came, dropped the hardwood floor off. Yep. They're like, it's going to be here for a week. We we have to let it get acclimated to to your condo. Yeah. You don't. Just, so I'm living with a <laughs> a load of wood in your living room. A load room. of wood <laughs> in my living room, <laughs> right. which is fine. I'm a bachelor. I just needed a toilet, a shower, and a, and a microwave. And a bed. I was right. fine. Right. And a place to put the leftover dinner that I went out with the night before. I was good. Right. Yep. A couple of rolls of toilet paper. Boom. And a towel. Well, not necessarily a towel. You just use your old clothes. But but <laughs> but but that's a whole another story. Sure. So, single men know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And, and moms that have dirty, disgusting boys know exactly what I'm talking about, right, Amy? Amy's like 100%. <laughs> so, but, so I'm living with this load of wood, yeah. okay, f for my condo, 800-square-foot condo, so it's a lot of wood. But you don't do that. You put it in the kiln. How long does it sit in that kiln to, to adjust? Yeah, so, you know, just the fact that somebody dropped off a load of wood in your living room doesn't mean that they're actually going to acclimate the floor properly. If your home is is outside the, the required relative humidity and temperature range and they drop off that wood, they're going to deacclimate the wood. So what we do is a little bit different. We actually will bring that material into our facility. We basically have, for lack of a better description, a large humidor, like where you would keep a cigar, and we control the relative humidity and the temperature year round. We acclimate up in the summer to the upper range of, 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 the, of the spectrum and down in the winter to mimic what the home should be. But by doing that, we can control all aspects of acclimation and we can control all aspects of proper performance of the wood floor, assuming 
you don't do a subtropical environment in your home of, of 80 degrees or 90 degrees and right. deacclimate you know, my floor. So again, very, very critically important to make sure that you're running dehumidification in the summer, humidification in the winter to keep that balance. So the magic range, David, for all the listeners out there, 30 degrees, I'm sorry, 30% relative humidity on the low end, 50% relative humidity on the upper end. If you can keep your home environment, relative humidity wise, within 30 to 50%, and okay. again, you could buy a, a $20 little thermohygrometer off anywhere, Amazon, big box, or it doesn't matter. That'll tell you what your range is. If you're above 50%, you can expect expansion of the floor. It will manifest itself in the form of cupping or buckling. Buckling, And yeah. that's a symptom. The floor itself isn't smart enough to do it on its own. Something has to act on it, right? So that's a symptom that you are way too high on the relative humidity range. And conversely, in the winter, if you're under 30% and you're not humidifying and your relative humidity is 15%, your floor is going to gap. You're going to create large gaps between the boards because, again, that is a symptom of a dry environment. So critically, very, very important, critical to maintain your, your environment. And, you know, companies like, like Dykstra and, and, you know, Rich, they're great at making sure that they can tune your home into that proper relative humidity and temperature range, which we critically need for properly functioning wood floor. If our listeners want to reach out and have questions about their floor, how do they reach you? Please give us a call directly at 847-674-7500 or visit us online at mrfloor.com.